Talmor, Sheshin Mugachi. Talmor is my home. My family have worked the land for generations. My gran says the island does not belong to us, but we belong to the island. And we must be ready for a great evil is coming. And death follows with it. Listen and subscribe to the latest season of Undertow, The Harrowing, a story glass production presented by Realm, available wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Alexis Ohanian. You may know me as one of the co-founders of Reddit, but more recently, a large part of my identity is being a father to my wonderful daughters. In my podcast, Business Dad, I hope to open the conversation about working parents a bit. You'll get to hear from a wide range of business dads, from Rain Wilson and Guy Raz to Todd Carmichael and Shane Battier, to find out how they balance being a dad with a successful career. Business Dad is available now, so be sure to listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Trying to get ready for this audition, ended up getting a live call back. Okay. And I'm sitting way in the waiting room and I'm like, I'm like, so in character, I'm focused. I'm going through my lines. I'm like, ready. <laughs> Ridiculous. And I'm in the waiting room and out of nowhere, pow, 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 like right outside my door. Hello, world, and welcome back to another episode of Thanks for Coming In. I'm your host, Jillian Clare. If this is your first time tuning into the show, this is the podcast where I speak to fellow actors about their journey in the entertainment industry, and I make them share a couple bad audition stories. If you're not subscribed to the show yet, click that subscribe button wherever it is you're listening to it right now. Make sure to leave us some love in the form of ratings and stars and reviews or whatever it is that uh, pops up as the way to show love on the form of audio listening that you are using. Did that make sense? Who knows? Um, Also... If you're not following us on social media, those links are in the show notes. We post some really cool video clips from these interviews. And, um, you know, there's occasional random movie scenes on our story um, and a bunch of other stuff. So head on over to those and um, hit that follow button. Okay, now that that's all taken care of, what's uh, what's happening, y'all? Um, I feel like I've been very busy because I, well, I have been very busy um, and I got another puppy. So I got the husky a couple months ago, you know, and, um, I had a birthday party in July where I was raising funds for the Beagle Freedom Project. And, um, they announced there that they were going to name one of the Invigo puppies after me. If you don't know about Invigo, um, you guys should look it up. There were 4,000 beagles rescued from this facility in Virginia um, from horrid conditions. And Beagle Freedom Project was a part of the organizations that went in and um, took some of the babies and the older puppies that needed to be dispersed throughout the nation. Because, hello, 4,000, so many. Anyway, they do great stuff. Um, they are all for ending animal testing, um, and they rescue so many lives. So if you don't know about them, I post about them a lot on social media. So um, head on over to my socials or their socials to learn more about what they're doing. But anyway, so they at my birthday party, um, which was a fundraiser for them, they announced that they were going to name one of the puppies after me, which ugh, they really knew what they were doing. Because how can you, like, not adopt a dog that's named after you? I mean, she's my namesake. Anyway, I adopted her. Um, I changed her name to Jellybean because that was, like, my nickname growing up. So it's now Princess Jellybean. Um, and she's the greatest. And her and the Husky are so in love. And it's so funny to watch them. Anyway, so I've been on dog mom duty lately. Um, lots of school stuff. Lots of writing. Lots of... Um, mayhem. <laughs> and that's that's my update for you all. That's all I got. 
Today on the show, we have Shakia Augustin. You may remember her from Black Lightning, where she played Shonda. She's also a great writer and creator and producer. She has a brand new show called Cold and Windy um, from All Black and We TV. She plays Malika, aka Cold. Um, and we talk a lot about that new adventure for her. So here is my conversation with Shakia. And welcome to the show, Shakia. Hi, Jillian. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on. I'm so excited to talk to you. Um, as I mentioned before we started recording, I totally stalked you online before uh, <laughs> we got here and saw that you were doing like so many freaking cool things. Um, <laughs> but before we get into all of that, I just kind of want to know what um, what inspired you to be an actor and a creator? And was is that something that happened as a child or is it something you discovered as an adult? Honestly, um, yeah, I, I think it, it was something that started when I was a kid. I think I've always kind of just been um, interested in the arts. Like as a kid, I think I, I gravitated to the arts more than anything else. Um, like I remember even even like just being in elementary school and like how you had to take science and math and all yeah. these different classes. My favorite class was always the music class. Like mm. I remember, I don't know if this if your school did this, but everybody got like a recorder in music class. Fun <laughs> at my elementary school. So everybody like was able to take home a recorder and they teach you how to play certain notes and you'd learn like Mary had a little lamb, like just random songs <laughs> like that. And I just remember being so in love with learning how to play that recorder. And at that time, I was also struggling in school because I like hated math, you know, like even something I like agree. multiplications used to like drive me insane. I would be like, why do I need to memorize this? I just want to use a calculator. <laughs> just let me use exactly. a calculator. <laughs> yeah. To all those teachers who were like, you're never just going to have a calculator in your back pocket. Um, yeah, we do. It's, it's, it's a cell phone. It's, it's Thank everywhere. You. It's like everywhere. So <laughs> at a young age, I really, I just never understood like, I guess it just felt unnecessary. It felt like unnecessary hard work, but something about being able to play Mary Had a Little Lamb was just so much fun for me. Mm. So I think every every time there was something artistic going on around me as a kid, I just naturally tried to do that thing. Yeah. Um, one of the things I did the most as a kid was I sang in the church choir um, oh. because my grandmother, uh, God rest her soul. She actually passed away right before the pandemic got oh, I'm sorry. crazy. But she had, she was like the most educated person in my family. Like she went mm. to college, uh, she studied psychology, but she just really loved like children. She was also a social worker. So she loved like getting kids in the community uh, active. And I think she was like the youth director at church. Yes, and Grandma. Yeah, so she would like put on events for the kids. And it was really just a way to like keep the kids entertained. So we like wouldn't go out in the streets and get in <laughs> trouble and all that yeah. nonsense. So it was like a way to just keep us busy. And <laughs> since I was her granddaughter, I was like expected to be there all the time. Like every day after school, I was at church helping her do this, helping her do that, helping her organize this play that we're doing for Easter or helping us organize the rehearsals for Sunday's singing competition <laughs> or showcase or any type of random thing we had going on. But um, I remember like my cousins used to feel like it was such a burden, like, oh, I don't want to go to church. And even though I had like my own feelings about like church, I just love being able to kind of creatively express myself. Yeah. So I feel like I've just kind of always been doing that or kind of mm -hmm. chasing that experience every time I move to a different town or even when I, uh, I moved when I was in high school to a completely different school. Um, and I just found the community. Like I was like, where are the, the music kids? Where are the theater kids? Where are the, I want to hang out with them. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I joined band. I feel like I did so many things just trying to stay creative. In middle school, I joined band and I played the flute in marching band all Fun. the way throughout. Oh, I love the flute. I actually still have it too. I just bought a new one. So I'm trying to like <laughs> get back practicing just to kind of like do some more uh, creative stuff. But um, I was in the marching band all throughout high school. And that's how I got my scholarship to college. 
Wow. And while being there, I was in the marching band. I went to FAU in Boca Raton, Florida. And I didn't even say I'm originally from Florida. Um, a very small town in Florida called Oakland. Most people haven't heard of it. But the, the only part Oakland about- I know is in California. In California. That's- <laughs> and people are always like, California. I'm like, no, um, there's this small town outside of Orlando. Um, I like to describe Oakland as like a... Uh, do you remember the town off Sweet Home, Alabama? I don't remember the name yes. of it. Oh my God, but it's yes. like super like country and like, I just love Reese Witherspoon in that movie because <laughs> oh, it's the best I, feel, movie. I feel like she's me, like going back home, yes. like, <laughs> like experiencing this. But I like to say it's like a, a combination of Sweet Home, Alabama and like P-Valley's Chuckalisa. Like it's like <laughs> <laughs> a mix between those places. Um, but the coolest part about Oakland is it was 20 minutes away from Disney. So that was like where we always went for field trips and something about, I think being around Disney so much, you just became a Disney kid. You just love the music. You loved all those experiences. So, uh, the, the marching band that I ended up joining, they were playing Disney music and that's kind of how I got hooked. I was like, you can, I was like, there's a Disney orchestra. You can like play the flute for them. So like, I was like on the track to like being like, like my dream was to like play Disney music for like Cinderella when Cinderella would play, you would oh hear gosh. the music in the background. And that's what I was, I was like, that's what I want to do. Something like that. But when you get to college, you just start doing a, a bunch of things. Like mm-hmm. the world just feels so much bigger. And I just remember just getting involved in everything. And we would do a play over here or we, uh, I was the manager of the on-campus record label and we would, uh, put together albums and music videos wow. and I wrote and directed a play in college uh, segue but in college I was the president of the black student union and we never had enough money to like put on okay. certain projects Wait, what didn't you do in college because it sounds like I, you did not sleep I think that's the thing it that sounds you did not crazy do. it sounds crazy when I think about it but that's what it feels like I feel like uh I feel like it's like from my grandmother because she like tried to keep me so busy. I feel like I was just conditioned to always be working on something. Mm -hmm. And I did have fun. I feel like I had fun. I pledged a sorority. I tried to have, you know, party, drunken nights, uh, a mess. But I still (laughs) just felt like I have to be doing something. I have to be creating something. Like I know we're going to go to this costume party tonight. But at 7 a.m., I do have a rehearsal for Mm -hmm. a concert we have coming up. So you just college was like a perfect place to learn how to balance like being an artist, but also like that work life balance. (laughs) Yes, because you honestly. Oh, sorry. Because you you really need it. And I I think uh, that's kind of just what I'm doing today. I'm just constantly um, trying to maintain a sense of creativity but also trying to live life so that you know these experiences can further inform the creative things that I do wow so kick ass is what we're (laughs) we're talking about got it okay (laughs) no I love it I feel like I'm the same way I I was always you know conditioned to be like doing things all the time so like when I sit down for when I have like a day of nothing I'm like what do I, is I should, something going to fall apart? Like, do I, yeah. do I need to be panicking? What's going on? It's like, is this bad okay? that yeah. I'm doing nothing right now? But I think it's also like, <laughs> especially for people like you and I, who are like, you know, the go-getters, the people who are consistently doing things all the time. It's important yeah. for us to like have those days where we say, no, turning off, not answering emails, not answering the phone. I need my day. Yes. I actually just got a dog. Because I was like, Yay. I just need to what live kind of my life. I got a, a golden retriever. His name is Teddy. He's Teddy. over there, but I have him like away because he is out of control. Yeah. He's 16 weeks. He just turned 16 weeks this week. Oh my and God. he's just all, he's like, if he wasn't over there, he'd be all over me. But he is. My almost one-year-old husky is right here laying down next to me. And she's finally calmed down. But she yells at me all day. Like all day, <laughs> like just talks to me all day. I'm like, oh my God. And I used to have a Husky, but I think because she was older when I adopted her, it was like, you know, she didn't have that energy. This one, oh yeah. my Lord, oh my Lord, I just can't make her stop. 
especially anyway. as puppies. But they're just, I, I feel like once, once I got Teddy, I just felt like, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to like decompress a little bit. Like life yeah. doesn't have to be so work, work, work. Like I can care for an animal. But at first I was afraid, like, I don't want to kill this thing. I don't want to <laughs> like, I don't want to like be too busy and forget, but I'm like, no, I got this. I totally grew up with pets and hamsters. I can do this. Yeah. And it's been great. He's still alive. We're still kicking <laughs> it. And he seems happy. He just got back. He just got all his vaccinations yesterday. So he can start going to puppy classes. So I, oh, I feel excited to kind of be able to kind of, you know, do something else besides just writing, writing, producing, producing, acting, yeah. acting so much. So, okay. Back to, um, college, what happens after college? So you go to college, do you make the move to New York, LA? What do you, what do you do? How do you make this decision to be a creative full time? You know, honestly, I think, I think after college is when you start to realize like, this isn't a dream. Like, mm. like when you're a kid, you see like your career on like this macro level. Like you see, yeah. oh, Disney, you just see Disney. <laughs> but you don't think about like the micro steps you have to take right. to get to Disney. Um, and I think after college is when I started to realize like, wait, I'm kind of doing all these things. Do I need to pick a lane? Do I need to pick a track? Do I need to focus mm. on one thing? Because while I was in college, I was a music major and I had a moment of self-doubt where I felt like I can't make this work as a career. So I changed my major to finance because I was oh. like, I think I'm going to need, yes, out of nowhere. I was like, I think I'm going to need a legitimate job right after college. Yeah. Um, so uh, I majored in finance and my last two years were like cramming, cramming, cramming this new major down my throat. And I was still minoring in music. So mu the music workload is like insane. Um, oh and God. so once I graduated, I got a job right out of college and it was a corporate finance job. And I pretty much worked there 45, 50 hours a week. <clears throat> Oof. But it was, <clears throat> it was one of those jobs where like you don't work as much as people think you do. Like mm. I just like balance the books at the end of the month. So like... I had like probably two to three weeks out of the month, they don't know this, where I was not like really doing anything. <laughs> and I wrote my first web series on the job. Like, Hell yeah. I, would, I would be like, on, we had, that's when we first had the dual screens and I would like have like one screen over here with like a screenwriting virtual <laughs> class. And then I'd be over here like balancing the books. And I literally wrote and produced, I worked there for only three years and then I was like, I gotta get out of here. But um, during those three years, I was able to make enough money to like every single check was like going into a class or going into a web series, um, producing projects, taking classes, mm. um, even straight after work. I was also performing in some local plays that they were having in Miami, which was like a 45 minute drive from where I went to school Oof. in Boca. So every day after work, I'm working a nine to five and then I've got practice at six in Miami. So I'm literally hopping in my car, driving to Miami yeah. every day after work to do these to do these rehearsals for a play we're going to have that my job doesn't care about. They're like, yeah, they're like nine to what? five, nine to five. What what, you just need to be here. And I'm like, yeah, I have this play <laughs> trying to invite people. But. I think like during that time, I was just thinking about the hustle and the grind and I realistically know I have to pay bill bills, but I guess New York and LA just didn't click to me at that time. Mm. <clears throat> like nobody was really telling me about New York. Like I knew about New York, but I guess I just didn't see myself there. I didn't see myself there yet. I yeah. wasn't even... I don't think I was sure what I was doing because I think I was mm. doing so many things. I didn't feel like there was a lane for me because I felt like I wanted to do all these things and I didn't see a title for that thing yet. Right. And then after creating a few web series, uh, that's when I think Issa Rae's Awkward Black Girl got picked up to HBO. Mm -hmm. A few web series started getting picked up and I was like, I'm kind of making those things. But yeah. I'm just probably not in the right place to get as much uh, recognition or eyes on it. Um, 
So as I started doing more research, I just started to be like, oh, they they made this in LA or, oh, they, mm. they made this in Atlanta. And things just started to click for me. Like, oh, if I'm really going to quit this finance job, I still have bills to pay. And how am I going to do that? I have to make a living off my work. I can't just I'm going to practice, yeah. you know? So it's like, how do I I mean, as much as we two? would all love that. <laughs> would just love to just work for free. You know, I yeah. would love that, <laughs> but it's just not reality. So eventually I ended up just being like, okay, moving to Atlanta. Wow. And while we were there <clears throat> in Atlanta, I did get a lot more experience. I started booking co-stars. Um, I started learning more about auditioning. Um, but I, there weren't any writing opportunities. And that's yeah. what I really wanted to be able to do, being able to write and act. I love acting. But I do feel like sometimes when you're just an actor, sometimes you just feel so powerless. And since I came from yeah. like a that's, web that's series That's the issue, right? Like, yeah. that's always the issue of being an actor is that like, you can be powerless. And that's why I think, you know, the, the rise of the multi-hyphenate is – is huge because we're making yeah. our own opportunities and saying, no, my career is my career and I get to yeah. decide what I want to do and when I want Definitely. to do it. it. It just feels so much more rewarding at the mm -hmm. end of the day, because I remember like my first year auditioning, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what sub takes <laughs> where I was still figuring it out. And I kind of equated my worth to the amount of auditions I was getting to the amount of callbacks I was getting and just trying to remind myself, like, I know I just, started so it's not gonna just pop for me but why do I feel like I'm not accomplishing anything yeah and then when I was I just made like a uh a, a, a pact with myself that yes I'm gonna always audition I'm gonna always put myself out there but at least once a year I have to produce something for myself so mm. that at the end of the year I'm not just looking at it like a bunch of auditions and I booked Two, I'm going to look at it like a bunch of auditions. I booked two and I created and produced this thing that I can put in film festivals or that I can just use these, this footage as my reel. Like my yeah. first reel, I didn't even realize it until afterwards, but my first reel was all footage of things I wrote and produced and <laughs> put myself in. Oh, I yeah. was like, I wouldn't have shots. I wouldn't have footage if I didn't, you know, take that step. So Wow. While being in Atlanta is where L.A. started to become a a must for me. And it mm. happened during the pandemic because we moved to L.A. Um, I mean, Atlanta, probably like three to four months before the pandemic hit. Holy Lord. So, yeah, like I barely even really got to experience Atlanta because I feel like Soon as I got there, we were like on lockdown. So I spent, mo we were in Al Atlanta for a year. So I spent most of my time in Atlanta in, in your house, inside, and just <laughs> yeah. doing like self tape auditions and working from home. So it was, it was a strange experience. But because of the pandemic, so many opportunities just started to open up virtually. So mm -hmm. a lot of classes that you could take in LA are now available to you anywhere, any time of the day. Yeah. And I started joining writers groups with people who were in LA and they all had these cool jobs. One girl, she was a, a writer's assistant on Bridgerton and another girl, she was a, a script coordinator on The Witcher. And I was like, well, how do I get that? And I was just like, <laughs> how do I make that happen for myself? And all of them kept saying, and I know this is still kind of up for debate, but they were, all of them made it seem like you have to be here in LA in order to really, really make it happen. Yes, you mm -hmm. can probably make it happen in Atlanta or Florida, but you kind of have to go where most of the opportunities are so that you can kind of yeah. increase your chances of getting said opportunities. So... By the end of the pan, well, not the end of the pandemic, because we're kind of still in it. We're still After here. about yeah. a year, <laughs> we're still here. Ugh. Um, but by towards like the end, I kind of just said to myself, "I think this is just what I need to do. I need to go." Um, but I didn't want to go empty-handed, so mm. I decided to produce uh one of my web series, mo most recent web series, Kinfolk. 
I pretty much was like, I'm going to give myself six months to, because also my lease was up. So like everything is like depending <laughs> on the lease at this point. I was like, my yeah. lease is up in six months. I am going to get out of here, but I need to do these things before I go. So it was like oh my working like crazy, saving money, but then also trying to produce a web series so that I could go to LA with like a package, new, so yeah, to speak. New stuff Something to that was show. fresh because what I filmed before was like a year prior. So it, it just didn't feel like something fresh. So um, my husband and I, we produced uh, Kinfolk in Atlanta, which was actually wow. better because Atlanta is like pro guerrilla style shooting, like right, yeah. permits, what are permits there? It's just like, <laughs> you just walk up to the store and we got like the entire hair store for free for like six oh hours. Oh my god! We just walked in there and they were like, yeah, sure. We're closed on Saturday. You can come in and shoot. And I was like, Oh my God, this would like not happen in LA. Like everybody No, in LA they'd be is, like, like, we need $10,000. Thank you. We need $10,000 yesterday. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was so like we were able to finish it. And then we moved here and it hasn't been easy being here. I don't even want to make it seem like, oh, I came here and the fantasy came to life. <laughs> no, it's like still the work. It's it's still the work. And I, I kind of just want to always remind myself that like yes Mm -hmm. it is a dream I'm living but it's also a career and a career I can actually make a good living off of if I treat it like work first Mm -hmm. and then like I don't know in my heart I just know it's a dream but in my head I know like I got a call time I gotta go (laughs) to work I like hair makeup like I have to know these lines. I have to be prepared for scene changes. I have to be prepared for a random monologue to come in. I <laughs> have to be prepared for press. Like there are so many things that go into this life of an actor that people only see what's on TV, but behind that, there's just so much work, like hard work that everybody is putting in for you to watch something for 30 minutes, a 30 minute episode, and people are putting in months of work. <laughs> <laughs> for just 30 minutes so yeah I'm I'm enjoying being here and just working really as a podcast network our first priority has always been audio and the stories we're able to share with you but we also sell merch and organizing that was made both possible and easy with Shopify Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell and grow at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. They have an all-in-one e-commerce platform and in-person POS system, so wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. With the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. Shopify has allowed us to share something tangible with the podcast community we've built here, selling our beanies, sweatshirts, and mugs to fans of our shows without taking up too much time from all the other work we do to bring you even more great content. And it's not just us. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S., Shopify is also the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash realm, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash R-E-A-L-M now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in shopify.com slash realm you can shop from anywhere doing pretty much anything you might shop while working eating or even listening to this podcast and however you shop we all know and love the thrill of the hunt but do you also know how to get the thrill of the best deals because Rakuten shoppers do With Rakuten, they get the deals they love with the most savings and cash back. And you can get it too. Start getting cash back at your favorite stores like Sephora, Nike, and even Expedia if you're looking to get some travel in. And getting cash back doesn't mean you have to miss out on sales because those can just be stacked right on top. It's easy to use and based on a simple idea, 
Stores pay Rakuten for sending them shoppers, and Rakuten shares the money with you as cash back through PayPal or check. Download the free Rakuten app and never miss a deal. Or go to Rakuten.com to start getting the most bang for your buck. That's R-A-K-U-T-E-N. I'd love to talk to you about your new show and how that came about because you are the star of a brand new series, which is flipping awesome. Um, so <laughs> I'd love to know more about it. Is it cold and windy or is it cold time? Yes, windy? cold and windy. Cold and windy. <laughs> tell me about it and tell me, do you know when it's premiering? Do we know anything yet? Uh, yes, I know the day. It's actually online. Um but they haven't been like promoting the date yet. Um, but I know. It's November third. By the time hey. it's out, it'll be out. It's November third. Um, but don't hold me to that because the date has been pushed back once already. But okay. um, November third is what it's looking like. But um, so cold and windy was honestly one of the first auditions I got when I moved to LA. Wow. But it was a job shooting in Atlanta. So like my <laughs> <laughs> like. I kid you not, my first year in LA, I went back to Atlanta to shoot four times. Like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, I cannot get out of Atlanta. Like I am stuck there right now. So like, yes, yeah, soon as I moved here, like a month later, I flew back to Atlanta. I was there for two weeks and I came back and then I had to fly back like a month later and Cold and Windy was a six week shoot. So I was back in Atlanta for six weeks. Oh my gosh. Um, but uh, Cold and Windy, I play Cold, um, and it's about two female drill rappers who are pretty much trying to make it in the music industry. Um, the story is based in Chicago, and these two women are Chicago natives. Um, but I play Malika. Um, her stage name is Cold. And she's a very, I, I love this character so much because I think she's, she's gritty and she's edgy. And she's not like me in a lot of ways. Like mm. she's from the hood. Like I, I'm from like I consider myself from the country, like not the yeah. hood. And I feel like the hood is like just a little different. But uh she's just got this edginess and confidence and bravery that like I've never had. Um, but the show is about pretty much her journey to honestly, freedom as an artist. And I think mm. that's kind of what we're all looking for. She's a young mom. She's got an eight-year-old son who was taken from her by the system because oh. of her violent lifestyle. And yeah. the, the interesting thing about drill rap music, it's kind of like trap music, but it's an actual genre where the lyrical content focuses a lot on violence. So wow. a lot of the lyrics are self-implicating, a lot of times, a lot of gangs are committing crimes and then they literally rap about it in the wow. songs and kind of incriminate themselves in the process of making music. And that is like the genre. That is the genre. It's an actual genre. And so these two I've women, never heard and about Wendy, this. and me neither until this, until this. Um, like I've heard of drill, but I don't think I knew what it was until I booked the role. And then I started doing research and I watched this documentary on drill music. And I thought, wow, this is a lot heavier mm -hmm. than I expected um, because a lot of people's lives are taken just in the midst of gang violence. So when you add dope music on top of it, it kind of just enhances and perpetuates that behavior. Yeah. Um, but my character is in a situation where because her son was taken, she's starting to second guess her her decisions when it comes to drill rap music. She's starting mm. to think, maybe I should rap about better things. Maybe I should change the topic of conversation because I just lost my son and I'm trying to get him back. But I can't get him back if the if my lawyer and the judge are watching me shoot guns in music videos and right. kind of continue to perpetuate that behavior. So that's kind of what the journey is about. It's wow. about her constantly trying to find a way to escape this life, to make a better life for her and her son. But she runs into a lot of 
pushback from her co-star, her her rap duo partner, Wendy, Cold and Wendy. And Wendy is more of like uh Kanan from Power. He she's mm, like she's mm-hmm. like the she's kind of like the antagonist. She's kind of the one in Cold's ear, like, no, you don't need to change. This is working for us. We need to go bigger. We need to shoot up this place like like crazy suggestions oh my gosh <laughs> and oh my gosh. is kind of like like it's the comp i like to use for this show is like empire meets power because yeah. it has a lot of musical elements we do all the raps ourselves like after set we would go to the studio and record songs so yes. all the music is original we performed all the songs um, so the, the musical element is very fun, but the lyrics are violent. And, wow. um, so yeah, that, that's kind of really the, the gist of the story. Um, but it was such a fun character to play because I feel like she's like the, not the complete opposite of me because she's an artist and she wants to live a free artistic life, but her lifestyle was so different for me. Like, I think this show might have been the first time I picked up a gun. Like, wow! And even though it was a a prop gun, it was it just still felt so real it, to it's me. It's weird, especially yeah. because during that time, like a lot of things were going on, like the shooting on set. That I, I don't know why I'm forgetting. Rust. Uh, yes, rust. But a lot of things like that were happening at the time, and I just felt like the weight of like having guns on set was like heightened yeah. even if they're even if they're fake it's still like it still being... feels real and especially because when you're in the scene and you're using it as a real weapon in your brain it feels real it feels like you're holding yes. like something that's dangerous and it is dangerous it's yeah. fake but it like it feels dangerous still yeah it it does and even sometimes just the the image of holding it feels dangerous sometimes Mm -hmm. so there was like always just this fine line of like I know I'm creating a character but also just being conscious of how I portray this character and understanding that you know art a lot of times is going to reflect life so a lot of times Mm -hmm. you are you're not performing characters you always agree with you're performing characters that reflect people's real lives the way people actually live and um, hopefully people can just see themselves and maybe see a, a better way, a different way. But um, oh. yeah, I, it was a great experience though. I think, I, I think aside from like the weight of the darkness <laughs> of the topic, <laughs> uh, it was just, it was so much fun to like be so active and to be so in a character. Um, obviously my hair is gone, but we wore like wi- like wigs every, every, like female rappers are obviously like you know cardi b she's like glamour yeah. glam to go to the grocery store like it's uh-huh. like full glam so that's how it was on set so that was fun to be like dressed up like my own version of cinderella but it's still so much work it's still yeah. so much work sitting and getting your hair and makeup done every single day two three hours and then you gotta Exhausting. go through the monologue it's like I didn't know getting my hair done would be so much work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to see this now. I um I love watching shows on All Black. I think they're doing like such cool shows. Yeah, they are. And I've been watching. I've had a lot of people um on the podcast from different shows that are on All Black, and I I just love the concept of the entire platform. And I think it's like such a cool. Yeah such a cool place for creators and artists and I don't know I think they're just making really really dope shit right now I'm I'm really excited about it yeah Um, I agree uh but okay so on this show we like to share audition stories uh and those can be (sighs) bad ones or funny ones or embarrassing ones is there one that you'd like to share with the listeners (laughs) yes (laughs) okay um so speaking of the hood and guns uh, (laughs) okay okay what a segue (laughs) What a segue. Okay, so when when I moved to Atlanta, like I said, the lease was, okay, even when I moved to Atlanta, it was like a lease thing. It was like, okay, the lease is up. Are we going to Atlanta or are we? And then when we finally decided to go to Atlanta, like we just wrapped shooting a different web series. So we were like crunched for time. So we rented an apartment 
it wasn't it wasn't like sight unseen like we went and we saw the apartment we, okay it looked it was amazing it was like a three bedroom townhome for like the low low so I was like this is great, great. um and on the inside, it was like so just updated and renovated. And the outside community looked fine. It looked fine to me. <laughs> there, oh, was no. something, <laughs> there was something. Um, the, there was something that was a little odd to me. The, the house across the street, it was like a, a townhome community. But the house across the street looked abandoned. Mm. Like there were, the window was cracked. And it just looked like one of those, it, the, the, the lawn wasn't groomed. It looked like, like a scary, like a, a scary haunted house type of thing. Okay. And I was like, that place is odd. But I was like, but this apartment over here is great and it's affordable. <laughs> so we're going to sign this lease and we're going to move in. So when you move to a new place, it's weird. It's just weird because yeah, it is. you don't, you don't know these people. These people don't know you. You're just showing up in this neighborhood and people are looking at you like, I guess, we're just supposed to accept you. Um, so it's awkward. Uh, but I was trying to get my self tape situation set up because I had auditions rolling in at the same time I was moving in to oh Atlanta. Gosh. So that first week, things just got weird in the neighborhood. Like people started coming out, you start to see the community. And I, I kid you not, it did not look like the hood. It didn't look like the hood, but it was the hood. And people liked to shoot guns in the neighborhood, like oh at God. random, at random times of the day. Like it would be like three o'clock and you just hear pow, pow, pow. And I was like, maybe, maybe they're hunting or something in the woods back there. But oh my gosh. So I was freaking out already. Okay. And I'm sitting wait in the waiting room and i'm like i'm like so in character i'm focused i'm going through my lines i'm like ready <laughs> ridiculous and i'm in the waiting room and out of nowhere pow 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 like right outside my door <laughs> oh my god I, I was freaking out okay i was like i was like what the heck so like, first of all, I was shook because like I said, I don't, yeah. I'm not a part of this life. I'm shook. And then like, it felt like a scene from a movie because like the timing was impeccable. It was like, pow, pow. And then like, it was probably like a four second break. And then I'm on the, I'm on the call now. Like, oh my God, no. The casting no. director is up. The cameras are on and they're like, hi, Shakia. Thank you for being here. And I'm like shaking, like I'm shaking, trying to get through this character. And I kept going, I kept going, but the whole time, like I was just not there because my mind was like, what if somebody just got shot? Uh, yeah. What if they try to come What if here? somebody's like dead on my doorstep? Do I like need to go lock the door? Or like, what if oh like I'm God. auditioning and like a bullet just like flies through the screen? Can you so, imagine? Honestly. <laughs> So honestly, like the hood is not good for self taping. That's all I have to say. <laughs> it's just not. Um, so after that, I was like, I have to live in a safer environment, and that goes back to like just the reality of like I'm an adult now. I have to. I'm a woman. I have to like protect myself. Like yep. my mom and dad are not here to do anything for me. Like I have to be a big girl now and take care of my business. So I was like. Soon as that, soon as that lease was up, I was like, "Audi, I'm going to LA. I don't have time for this insanity." And it happened all the time, honestly. Like I would be on Zoom calls, and like oh gunshots would go off, and I would just be like, "Yes, <laughs> my name. yes, they're just." I can't. <laughs> Like, oh my god oh my god that like, is that is a terrifying thing that you had to like condition yourself to get used to as well like the fact that you had to like get used to that noise so that you could focus on your meetings and your auditions like it's, oh my god it's not even normal it's not even no, normal it's not normal just be like oh that's just my neighbor they're just shooting just something just shooting 
for no reason. Wow. <laughs> that was a great story. That was a good one. Dang. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so what's next for you? Are you working on anything right now? Are you writing anything? Yes, yes. I'm doing a lot of writing now. Um, while I, we just wrapped Cold and Windy a couple months ago. And during that time, it's like, sometimes being a multi-hyphenate, like the goal is balance. Like, yep. and sometimes you have to know, like, I might need to take a break from this thing to focus on this thing. Mm -hmm. And so like, while I was doing Cold and Windy, I wasn't doing any writing because I just yeah. didn't have time. We actually filmed an eight episode drama in six weeks. So That's it was wild. like, that's, That's not even a full week per episode. That's insane. That's it was it was a block shooting like seven to ten days Ooh. to shoot two episodes at a time. So Ooh. like one day I'm here and then the next day, or literally like in one day, I'm going from episode one, two, one, two, like oh back and forth, wardrobe changes. So it was it was a lot. So I just couldn't write. No. So that was three months of not writing. So I was like, okay, this summer I'm gonna take a break from auditioning. Because that was difficult too, especially during pilot season. It's hard to write because you have auditioning auditions coming in back to back. And sometimes mm -hmm. you're auditioning every week for that yeah. month. And you don't, sometimes your brain just can't be like, I'm going to go memorize 10 pages and then I'm going to go write 10 pages right. about it's something very difficult. completely different. So I've had to kind of become okay with being like, I know I'm not writing right now and that's okay. Mm -hmm. I will find time. So this summer I was like, I'm going to cut back on auditioning and just wait till episodic season. And during this summer, I'm working on three scripts right now. Um, my first feature film I'm excited about um, is called I Got Rhythm. And it's about a church girl who falls in love with jazz music. Um, and I'm actually working with a coach on that. So it feels good to kind of like have someone that's like, wow. hey, your pages are due this week. Um, because before I was just writing pilot scripts and web series so to write a feature for the first time I was like I feel like I need like a an accountability partner so I have a coach helping me with that um and I'm working on a feature film script called Burn House that I actually plan on starring in and producing yeah. with uh uh with a young woman her name is Destiny Macon we actually met a couple years ago we did a short film together um and I was just an actress but she was the writer and director and we just kind of clicked on that project, but our that short film just this year got into ABFF, and nice. it was nominated. It was nominated for the HBO Short Film Award. Oh my and gosh. so we were like, we're making magic together. We should like do something else. <laughs> so um, we're working. We're co-writing a script now. We just finished the treatment, so now we're headed into script like now. Um, and yeah, we've just been like co-writing that. And then I have a pilot. I'm working on with my husband and it's actually inspired by the shooting hood apartment place. <laughs> okay. So, well, something good came of it then. Cause he right, got a script I idea. Like, I was like, my trauma will become a story. <laughs> I will turn oh my this God. into a story. And it's, That's such it's a creative fun. person thing. It's like, oh my, trauma? I need more trauma. I need to write right. things. Give me give all me the, the trauma. Give me the trauma so I can come up with a great story, please. Or painting or a song or whatever right. it is. <laughs> I think I saw a quote where somebody said, don't date a writer because you'll end up in their story. <laughs> like, so true so true like I'm oh gonna write gosh. about it <laughs> well I mean it's been so fun having you on the show um I'm so excited to see everything that you're gonna do how can people follow you on social media to keep up with all your all your projects on Instagram I am Shakia Augustin S-H-K-I-A A-U-G-U-S-T-I-N and that's pretty much my handle everywhere if you just look up that that is I try to keep it simple because yeah, the name is already long. So it's just like, honestly, if you just type in my first name, it's like unique enough that kind of nobody has it yet. So <laughs> um, it's easy to look up. Um, and that's me on IMDb. I tend to put a lot of projects on there as well, just to keep people up to date with what I have going on next. But it was it was amazing talking to you too. This has been so much fun. And I was okay. a little nervous because this is like my first interview. So I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> That's so exciting. I feel yeah, honored. but it was fun. It was so much fun. You've been amazing. 
Oh, thank you so much. It's been so, so nice talking to you. And I seriously can't wait to see all, all that you're doing. I love I love a woman who goes out there and makes her own career. So I'm I'm so I am Team Shakia all the way. Woo. Thank you. I'm Team Jillian. Yes. <laughs> yes. Team us. <laughs> team us. We did it. <laughs> Thanks again to Shakia for coming on the show and spending some time with me. Make sure to check out her new show, Cold and Windy, November 3rd on All Black or We TV. Um, it's gonna be really good. I'm I'm super stoked to watch it. So I hope you are too. Make sure to put that on your like, you know to watch list. Do you keep a list? I keep a list. There's too many things out in the world. You have to keep a list. Um, yeah. And, uh, thanks again for tuning in every week. So nice to, I don't see you guys. I was going to say nice to see you guys, but I, I don't see you guys. So, um, thanks for listening to me ramble. <laughs> and as always, thanks for coming in. Nowadays, trends and news cycles change faster than we can blink. But there are some things that withstand the test of time. And if you're looking for a connection to something timeless, and maybe also a glimpse of life at a slower pace, I believe everyone can relate to the very human experiences explored in Jane Austen's novels. And that's where I come in. My name is Alison Larkin. I'm a writer, comedian, and narrator and host of The Jane Austen Podcast with Alison Larkin. I spent a lot of my childhood in the part of England where Jane Austen lived and wrote, and now that I live in the States, nothing gives me a sense of homecoming quite like narrating her books. On this show, you'll listen to award-winning narration. I'll give myself a pat on the back for that as well as conversations with actors, writers and other fascinating people who all share a passionate love for Jane Austen. So please, join me as we embark on a wonderful journey through Jane Austen's work. Be sure to listen and subscribe to The Jane Austen Podcast with Alison Larkin wherever you get your podcasts.